You're ready for your second set of Abyssal Dungeons, but are you truly prepared? Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, back for a brand new Lost Ark video. Today we're diving in and breaking down everything you need to know about the Hall of the Twisted Warlords Abyssal Dungeon. When it comes to dungeon guides, we believe that in order for you to be successful, we need to keep things simple and straightforward. Paths leading up to each major fight will be talked about if there are particularly difficult mechanics. Otherwise, most of the focus will simply be on breaking down each boss's respective moveset and core fight mechanics to help you be as successful as possible. Each part of the dungeon will be broken into chapters down below, so feel free to jump around to the section that you need. Getting to the first boss isn't challenging by any stretch, no more so than tackling any other dungeon in the game. Keep clearing and killing monsters until you reach the first rest point before the first major boss. The first encounter groups will face in the Hall of the Twisted Warlord is the Phantom Legion Rook and Bishop, a multi-boss fight that challenges a team's ability to work together, but also have the personal awareness to keep the fight progressing. Each boss has an independent health pool, and the goal is to kill them at the same time. This will cut down on a berserk mechanic we'll talk about shortly. As always, I want to start with the core mechanic, known as the gimmick. Twice throughout the fight, the Rook, that's the big guy, will jump towards the outer edge of the arena, at which time he'll begin targeting a random member of the group. At the same time, three members of the party will get a purple aura around them. This will deal ticking damage to anyone caught inside, which is why it's best to run these out towards the outer walls. The player that doesn't have the aura is marked, and after a short period of time, the Rook will cast a spell in a straight line towards that marked player. The key here is to put the Bishop, the other boss, between you and the Rook, and use that projectile to hit the Bishop, ending a potential one-shot mechanic. Think of this like Monkey in the Middle. The marked player and the Rook are the ends, and the Bishop is the middle. You want her to catch the projectile because that stops a one-shot raid-wide AoE. This happens a second time towards the end of the fight, but this time there are multiple towers that pop up around the bishop. Players will have to DPS these down in order to create a path for the projectile to hit the bishop. If this mechanic isn't handled properly, it's a wipe, plain and simple. Apart from the gimmick, you'll have plenty of other mechanics to contend with, and we'll focus on each individual boss so you can better see each of the pieces before we put it all together. The Rook only has two core abilities, the first being a punch-swipe combination. The boss will randomly aggro someone in your party and move towards them. If he gets within melee range, he'll first throw a right hook that lands right in front of his position, followed closely by a left-handed swipe that hits a slightly larger area to his front and side. The Rook's second basic ability is a belly flop. After a short delay, the boss will jump to a targeted location, slamming the ground and causing a shockwave to shoot out in a cross pattern. Anyone caught in the impact zone or the shockwave will take damage. While the Rook doesn't bring a lot to the table, in conjunction with the Bishop's mechanics, he's a constant annoyance on the battlefield, especially when he manages to stand on top of the other boss, causing more confusion than normal. The Bishop does have a more robust set of moves, but they're all relatively straightforward and basic. We'll start with the orb-based mechanics. The first to be aware of is when a set of four shadow orbs moves from the outside of the arena in towards the boss in a cross pattern. Once they reach the boss, they shoot back out rotated 45 degrees. The Bishop will also summon multiple orb zones on the floor. After a brief delay, these will explode, dealing damage to anyone caught in their AoE. The Bishop also has two laser abilities. The first occurs after a short telegraph. The boss will project four telegraphs in straight lines in a cross pattern. After a short delay, lasers will shoot out. This is immediately followed by a second set of lasers rotated 45 degrees from the boss. The Bishop also utilizes the same effect in random directions. After the same type of telegraph, the boss will begin casting lasers one after the other for a short period of time. These cast one at a time, but happen in quick sequence. The final mechanic sees the bishop summoning lines of dark magic randomly around the room. These stretch out in a straight line, but are challenging to predict. They will deal damage to anyone caught in their path, but do relatively little damage compared to the other mechanics in the fight. It's best to keep moving during this mechanic to avoid getting caught in a void zone. If you don't manage to kill the bosses at the same time, you're in for a world of hurt. Whichever boss is left alive becomes enraged and gains access to a new set of abilities. To be completely transparent, if you get to this point, you're most likely going to wipe, unless you manage to kill the boss shortly after this enrage period. This is a soft wipe mechanic that's designed to teach you that you need to kill the pair at the exact same time, but it is possible to have some separation between them. 
The real key to killing the Phantom Legion Rook and Bishop is handling that one-shot mechanic. Using voice comms isn't necessary if everyone knows their jobs, but of course it makes it much easier. This is also one of those fights that promotes a lot of movement. Because there are two bosses and a lot of things popping off around the encounter area, it's best to stay nimble as staying stationary will often result in you eating a major mechanic. Stay calm, handle that one-shot mechanic properly, nuke the bosses down at the same time, and you'll knock this first encounter down no problem. After beating the Rook and Bishop, you'll fight your way through the palace to the Hall of the Twisted Warlord. There's nothing special about the lead-up to the main boss in the dungeon, so just keep killing and keep moving forward. Full disclosure, I love this second boss, the Phantom Legion King. It's a cool encounter that combines interesting dungeon aesthetics with engaging mechanics, which makes it a great culminating fight in this first of two Phantom Palace Abyssal Dungeons. Once again, let's start with the main fight mechanic, as those will be the primary choke points for groups just learning the encounter. At 16 and 6 health bars, the boss will teleport to the center of the arena and surround himself in a purple shield. The goal here is to do enough stagger damage to the boss and break the shield before the group wipes. At the same time he teleports, the boss will summon one phantom sword per player, four in total. Each player will have a sword chasing them. If the sword reaches the player, it will trigger a two-second debuff. The goal here is to trigger these debuffs one at a time so that players with high stagger damage can get rid of the chasing sword and break the barrier. If any player attacks the boss without being hit by a sword first, the group wipes. Additionally, if any players get hit by the sword during the time that they have that two second debuff, the group also wipes, which is why you need to wait for the debuff to fall off before triggering another sword. Now, how to handle this mechanic is relatively simple. First, designate each player to a cardinal direction on the map, north, south, east, or west. Then, assign a simple debuff rotation. It's best to stick to the party order number assigned upon entering the dungeon, but if you can't coordinate it ahead of time, you want to go in order of who can do the most stagger damage to the boss. Once the boss begins to channel the ability, run to your part of the room. After a second or two, a ghostly looking sword will start to chase you around. This is where things get a bit complicated, so listen up. You can only attack the boss at this point if you get the debuff. To get the debuff, you need to get hit with a sword. Once a member of your team is hit with a sword, you have to wait two more seconds before another member of your team can get hit with the next sword. If sword hits overlap during that debuff window, it's a wipe. Once a player gets hit with a sword, their job is to immediately go to the boss and break the stagger bar. This will stop the mechanic and the fight will continue. The real key to this mechanic is communicating effectively with your team. Right from the start, the first player assigned should get the debuff by standing as close to the boss as possible. This will trigger the first sword debuff almost instantly. After the debuff has dropped, the second player allows the sword to hit them. Same thing, wait for the debuff to drop, then the third player lets the sword hit them, and at this point the boss should be staggered and the fourth sword should become irrelevant. It's a tricky mechanic, one you need to see a few times because it requires coordination as well as decent damage to meet that stagger check. Speaking of stagger checks, let's talk about the boss's second major ability, a stagger check. This one is a bit chaotic, but straightforward. Randomly throughout the fight, the boss will summon a shield and begin glowing orange. While channeling, the boss will activate several pizza-shaped slices around the room. Anyone caught in those zones will take damage, and of course the only way to get the boss out of this channel is by breaking his stagger. If you fail to do this in a timely manner, the boss will surge and the group will wipe. Like most bosses, handling major mechanics will determine your success as a group, but on an individual level, you'll also have to contend with a number of abilities from the Phantom Legion King. I'll try and go through these in order of impact, but know that any ability can really take you out of the equation. First up, the boss has a series of three sword swings. This is a standard melee chain of attacks that happens when there are players within striking distance in front of the boss. Taking this up a step is the boss's Buster Sword ability. After a brief charge-up period, the boss sends out a wave of dark energy, and this can either be in a straight line or in a tri-shot pattern, depending on what percent HP the boss is at. To identify this move, really pay attention to the boss's positioning. His sword will glow white and purple, and his stance will visibly change when he's about to use this attack. Another ability you'll need to look out for is the boss's dash-dive combination. After a slight pause, he'll dash forward, hitting anyone in his path, then teleport above the battlefield and slam down, dealing damage to anyone caught underneath. This move happens quickly, so really focus on the boss's posture, as it's a good way to know what's coming next. Throughout the fight, the boss will also open up a portal above his head and call down a small wave of daggers. These land in slightly random locations directly in front of the boss, dependent on where he's facing. 
In the same vein, the boss will also summon big swords and call them down onto the battlefield. After a brief delay, the swords will fly up and then telegraph their impact points, landing shortly after. Anyone caught in the AoEs will take a decent chunk of damage. These will also leave behind small void zones for a short period of time. While not used often, the boss will periodically call in a set of spinning blades that move slowly across the encounter area. These do a large chunk of damage and are hard to maneuver around, so be on the lookout for any open path, or just have some sort of defensive ability or item handy to offset any damage you might take. The Phantom Legion King will also jump around the map, slamming down onto the ground, dealing damage in an AoE. This can quickly be followed up by a massive frontal cone attack, and if caught, of course, you'll take a sizable amount of damage as well as be knocked up. When he's sick of jumping, he'll do the same thing, but with a dash. The boss will dash multiple times and often follow this up with the same AoE frontal conal attack. Once you understand his wide array of tools, you realize he's not that bad, especially because the moves don't overlap too terribly and they come at a relatively slow pace. The real challenge with the Phantom Legion King is managing those two major gimmicks, especially the Phantom Swords. Communication is key, and if you're not using something like Discord, it becomes incredibly hard to organize your group. Quick plug here, if you don't have your own Discord, you're welcome to use the Legacy Gaming Discord. We have thousands of players joining us every night to play Lost Ark, and everyone is welcome to use our space to group up. Now, once you master those two major mechanics, the rest really falls into place. It's one of the easier bosses to navigate around, and his abilities fire off slower than most, making it a much more forgiving fight than other encounters. Master the debuff rotation, break his multiple staggers, and don't get stabbed in the process, and the Phantom Legion King will fall in defeat awarding you with the riches he protects. Hopefully this guide helped you effectively tackle each encounter and boss that this dungeon has to throw at you. These are effectively raid mechanics and things only ramp up in difficulty from here. At this point, you're ready to tackle the Hall of the Twisted Warlord. If you do have any questions, be sure to leave us a comment below. We've been having a blast making Lost Ark content and we love interacting with you all in the comment section. If you're on US East Regulus or you want to join the largest Lost Ark guild in North America, we invite you to join Legacy Gaming. With 30 guilds across our entire community and hundreds of people playing online every minute of every day, it's a great place to learn the ropes, meet new friends, and support the channel all in one fell swoop. Check out the link to our Discord below. Finally, if you guys like everything we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us even more, you can do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping Livid and I achieve our dreams of becoming full-time content creators. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.